Got me on there, fellas? A little volume. All right. Welcome to the service tonight. Good to see you here for the, uh, this would be Thanksgiving Eve, but it's, I guess, the eve of Thanksgiving Eve and uh, midweek service. Thanks for being out on Tuesday night instead of Wednesday. And uh, take a songbook. Let's start by singing together. 531, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. 531, let's stand together to sing. Brother Bob will lead us. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. singing and uh, again good to have you here this evening for our thanksgiving service and uh, we do have a prayer request here that was put on the pulpit i want to remember this man in prayer uh, william allman uh, this was turned in by the pull labels uh, he was in an auto accident and when he stepped out of the car he was hit by another car and the police officer was hit also uh, he is in william uh, the young man is in critical condition at riverside um the police officer has a broken leg and arm, and so we remember William in prayer and this officer as well as we open in prayer tonight, all right? Let's bow together, shall we? Father, we bow before you in prayer this evening, Lord. We do remember these men that have been involved in this accident, and Lord, we're asking you to be the great physician in this situation and uh, put your healing touch upon their bodies, please. Lord, we uh, do not understand why things like this take place and uh, why things like this happen but we know that you understand and that all things are in your control and lord we pray that you will undertake here in this situation and that your will will be done and uh, the lives of these people who are involved lord thank you for each one that's made their way out here to our service this evening lord i pray that you'll have your hand upon all the activities here of this night uh, from the bible study uh, to the honoring of our workers uh, Lord, I pray there'd be a good spirit in this place. Thank you for what you're doing in our church and through our church. And I pray, God, that you'd be pleased with the service here this evening. And I pray that we could leave in a little bit and we'd all be able to say it sure was good to have been in the house of the Lord this evening. And we pray you'll direct our service that way. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated, if you will. And... Um, Folks coming in, we're going to reverse things just a little bit. Normally, we're uh, going to recognize the workers and such, but I think we're going to reverse it. I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to jump right in with the Bible study first, all right? And uh, we're going to make sure that is done, and then we'll get into the honoring of uh, the workers, okay? So I want you to turn, if you will, to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. 
It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Now, Father, help us as we open up your word tonight and Father, I pray you'd speak to us now, help us to focus, help us to uh, do our best to give our careful attention to your word this evening, that we not miss what you have for us tonight. And so, Spirit of God, do your work in each one of our hearts and lives and uh, open our understanding. And Lord, help us to glean the things that you would have us to glean from this psalm this evening. And I'll thank you for it, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. What do you think of when you... Think of Thanksgiving, think of a long weekend, uh, a few days off work, maybe you think of football, uh, we don't, uh, we'll think about a game on Saturday, and uh, boy, you're a brave man, but, uh, but uh, I, was, I was actually more worried about that game than I was the last Saturday's game, so now we're in real trouble, you know, but uh, you think about, some people think about shopping and Black Friday, or they think about history, or they think about family and getting together. Uh, with other family members, but you know, Thanksgiving uh, to a believer is more than any of those things, and uh, those things may be a part of what we do with gatherings and being with family and, and uh, enjoying some of the things of having some time off work, but the truth is uh, it means more to us because we have someone to give thanks to, and we know who has given us all that we have. Um, Thanksgiving is a rather unique holiday. It doesn't, it doesn't come uh, from a battle or anybody's birthday or anything like that. It's simply a day set aside to express our gratefulness to God. Uh, and, and it's unique to, to the United States. In 1789, George Washington made a public proclamation, and George Washington said this, It's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. And so he then assigned Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, to be a day of thanksgiving. And boy, it'd be great to have a president talk that way again, wouldn't it? And um, he, 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 But long before <laughs> 1789, folks were experiencing thanksgiving and celebrating Thanksgiving, in fact, all the way back here to Psalm 100. This is the Thanksgiving Psalm, and I want to give you five key words from Psalm 100, that five ingredients uh, that will make up our Thanksgiving, all right? Uh, you know, anytime, anytime, one of the things that uh, when somebody makes something, if you go to someone's home for Thanksgiving, or uh, somebody comes to your house, and they really enjoy something you made, and maybe it's some dessert, maybe it's your pumpkin pie, maybe it's some side dish you made, and, and they say, man, this is really good. Can I have the recipe? And what they'll do is they'll get that recipe and they will follow that recipe. They'll put just those exact amount of ingredients in the proper order so they can duplicate what you made. You know, one of the tragedies that that we miss sometimes is when you ever, you ever get down to the end of a day and say, man, I had a really good day. I hope you have. When, when that happens, you ought to stop and think, what ingredients went in to have that good day? Why was that a good day? Well, why don't I write down those ingredients so that I can duplicate this day? Don't, don't you say, oh, it's a good day. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get lucky and have one tomorrow. Huh? You had to be here Sunday night to get that one. Uh, yeah, no, you, you, it, it shouldn't be that way. And listen, when it comes to Thanksgiving, there's ingredients that the Lord gives us here in Psalm 100 that'll help us to have the right kind of Thanksgiving. And will help us not just to make it a day, but to make it part of our life. Okay? Very first word, verse number one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. First word is joy. Joy. Isn't it funny how we don't have problems shouting at a football game, but we sure got a problem when it comes to shouting in church? Yeah, come on. 
People don't have any problem watching a game and saying, Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, come on, man. What was wrong? And yet you go to church and you're like, huh? Can't hardly keep your eyes open and you're sitting uninterested. Uh, that, that, as Paul said, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Uh, our, our lives are to be a joyful, uh, full of joy to God. Billy Sunday used to say, if, if you uh, don't have joy in, your, joy in your religion, there's a leak in your Christianity somewhere, you know, and you, 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 got, you got issues. And so come before, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Did you ever just get excited about God? Do you ever just get excited about the things of God? You get as excited about, hey, you ever get as excited about going to church as you do about the ball game? You get excited about being in the house of God and being around God's people? And, and that brings an excitement to you? I watched not too long ago a, a film clip of the victory celebration in New York City when World War II ended. Man, those people were excited. And they were shouting. And they were, they were glad the war was over, the victory was won. Well, hey, I got news for you. The victory's been won. <laughs> I read the end of the book, and uh, we win. And God's, we're on the winning side. We sing that sometimes around here. And, and there ought to be some excitement and some joy in our Christianity. And I know that who has the victory. And so be filled with joy. Don't, don't show up at church and have a, you know, your face dragging so long, you're kicking your chin when you walk. Just, just say, man, I'm going to come in, and I'm bringing the joy with me. Make a joyful noise. When we sing, sing. Say, oh, I can't carry the tune in the bucket. Make a joyful noise. It's okay. But be joyful in your Christianity. All right? And, and so the first word is joy. Now, let's go to number two. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Now we have the word gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. There is a big difference between gladness and sadness. Okay? A lot of people think they, that, that it seems like they got that verse wrong and serve the Lord with sadness. And they try to make it look as miserable as they can. But people ought to come to church. Unless you ought to come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and it's not coming together. Uh, we, we went to um, uh, Amy's mother's funeral today. And, and you know, you, you, funerals are a little more solemn occasions. They usually have some nice, soft music playing, and everybody's pretty, you know, reverent and not, not very loud, and you don't, nobody's making jokes or anything like that. And, and as it should be, you're trying to have some respect for the family who is in mourning or, or in, in feeling heavy because of the loss of their loved one. Uh, but listen, that's not what church is about. In fact, church, church, we come together at church on Sunday particularly, and, and, and that is Resurrection Day. That is, that's when believers begin to meet on the first day of the week to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, they used to come to church and say, He is risen and the reply would be, he is risen indeed. Oh, listen, we're not serving a dead Savior. We're serving a living Savior. And so we can serve the Lord with gladness. Hey, we've got something that no other religion in the world has. And that is we have a living Savior. And we, listen, nobody dead can save anybody. Nobody dead can change anybody's life. It takes a living Savior to change somebody's life. We have that living Savior. Man, what are we wearing a frown to church for? Okay, let's come in. Let's come in with gladness. Let's serve the Lord with gladness. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. In just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Hey, you ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. And I know he's alive. That's what we ought to do. Hey, hold your finger there in Psalm uh, 100 and go to your left. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings 10 is where Solomon receives a visit from the queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba had heard about the greatness of Solomon. 
And, and she had to go check it out in person. She heard that, that he was so great and so amazing and all his kingdom, she had to go see it for herself. She couldn't believe that what she heard was true. And here's what she said in verse number 6. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Now, by the way, that's unusual. Usually the hype is bigger than the real thing. You ever, you ever had somebody build something up to you and then you went to see it for yourself and you said, this was it? <laughs> this is what everybody's talking about? Uh, you know, it, now, the, it was just the opposite for her. But now look, she said, your fame and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Look at verse 8. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Happy are the men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee. You know what impressed her? How happy everybody was serving. Hey, these are people doing their job, and what really impressed her was they served with gladness. Hey, I wonder if people observed us, if they followed us around, or if they just came for several weeks and observed you serving the Lord, would they be thrilled that you served the Lord with gladness? Would they say, wow, these people don't just serve God, they like serving God. They, they are glad to serve the Lord. Joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Let's go to number three. Go back to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Now, the third word is dependence. First word, joy. Second word, gladness. Third ingredient is dependence. Dependence. You see, this, this verse shows three roles of God. Three roles of God. First of all, it says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. We talked about this, that, that God is the Lord. We talked about it Sunday morning. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Master. He's the Ruler. He's to be the boss of our lives. We're to remind ourselves, we have to remind ourselves occasionally, God is God and I am not. Okay? Because we tend to kind of take that spot. And, and that's not our spot to take. He is the Lord, not us. And then we find out He's the Creator. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. You ever hear somebody say, I'm a self-made man? Huh? Not according to the Bible, they're not. It is He who hath made us. And by the way, you didn't evolve from an ape or evolve from an amoeba. Uh, he made us. He's the creator. God is the creator. And if you create something, you are greater than what you have created. And God is greater. The cre creator is greater than the creature. And you have right over that which you have made. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. And then we find God is also the shepherd. The shepherd. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He's our shepherd. God guides us to the place of security, plenty, and rest. He's the shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I won't lack anything. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's my shepherd. Someone said this, if we are created, he's the creator. If we are his sheep, then he is our shepherd. If we enter his courts, he is our king. And if we serve him, he's our master. I'm dependent on God. We're dependent on God for the air we breathe. 
dependent on God for every breath we take. He knows every beat of our heart. He knows every thought that we have. We can thank Him for being God. We're, our job is pretty simple. Depend on Him. In all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge Him. He will direct our path. And again, when we get that out of kilter and we try to direct our path, then we're forgetting the other point. He's God, we aren't. It's His job to direct the path. It's our job to acknowledge Him. We're dependent upon Him. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Oh, it may look like something. But you see, the Bible says there'll be a judgment one day. And the works that we have, the things we're building, will be tried by fire. And, and the things that we just do on our own, those are, that, that's material called wood, hay, and stubble. How do you think the wood, hay, and stubble is going to hold up in the fire? <laughs> Not very well. But the things we do in His power and in His strength are the gold and the silver and the precious stones. And they will abide the fire. In fact, they, they, they only get finer by the fire. All right? And so we have dependence. Be dependent upon Him. First, first ingredient was joy. Second ingredient is gladness. Third ingredient is dependence. All right? Fourth ingredient is thankfulness. Thankfulness. Notice verse 4. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. And into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless his name. Now you're not going to give thanks unless you're thankful. And thanksgiving flows out of a thankful heart. You recall the, the story in Luke 17 about the lepers that were cleansed. But you, if you recall that story that Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest and it says as they were going they were healed. They were cleansed. And, and, and so they're on their way now to see the priest because the priest could pronounce them clean and reintroduce them back into society. And so they're going, and, and to the priest they realize, wait a minute, man, it's all gone. But how many of them turned back and went back to Jesus to say thank you? Just one. And Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are they? The nine. He said, there's none that's returned to give thanks, but this one is the only one. And listen, do you think, hey, do you think the other ones weren't grateful? No, I think they were. I think they thought, woohoo, look at me, man. Hey, I'm going home. I can't wait to see my family again. And they might have they might have even said, Thank you, God, or thank you to the priest or whoever. But listen, they never took time to come back and say thank you to Jesus. Hmm? You ever prayed about something, prayed about something, God finally answers it, and you're excited, and you tell your wife, and you tell your friends, and you tell everybody else, but you don't always remember to go back and get alone on your knees and say, God, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for answering prayer. And we just don't take the time to express our gratitude. Now listen, I think there's many people on Thursday that'll gather around a table and in the midst of, of waiting on the meal to get ready, whether it's football, whether it's games, whether it's other activities that take place or other conversations that take place, that outside of a prayer before we overeat, that's the only thanksgiving God gets. I hope that there would be some folks who would say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that before, maybe early on Thanksgiving Day, before all everything gets going, you'll take time just to, just to give thanks to God and have a thankful heart. And, and maybe take time to make sure that you're expressing that gratitude to the Lord. Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? We need to express our thankfulness to God and, and let Him know that we are thankful. Twice as here it says, enter in His gates with thanksgiving, and then it says, be thankful unto Him 
and bless his name. He's very careful to make sure that we bring thanksgiving to God. And a lot of times we think it, and we're, we, we've, we've, it's gone on our mind, but we haven't expressed that to God. All right? We have four words so far. What are they? Number one, joy. Second ingredient, gladness. Third ingredient, dependence. Fourth ingredient, thankfulness. Here's the fifth ingredient, gratitude. Verse number five, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Three reasons to be grateful to God. First of all, very simple, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. We say it. Do we believe that? God is good. And God is good, what, not when I think He's good. He's always good. He's always good. And, and don't, don't forget that. You know, you get, you get tired, you, you get used to hearing Brother Jarvis say that. God's a good God. He does good things. And, and don't just let that become commonplace. The Lord is good. If, if we didn't have a hard time remembering that, God wouldn't have to put it in there. We put it in there so we would remember that. Secondly, the second reason to be grateful is the Lord's mercy is everlasting. Grace is where we get from God what we don't deserve, but mercy is where we do not receive from God what we do deserve. Aren't you glad His mercy is everlasting? His mercies fail not. We'll sing great is thy faithfulness in just a minute. Because thy, thy compassions, they fail not. And I, listen, his mercies are new every morning, Lamentations tells us. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are what? Not consumed. It's only of the Lord's mercies that he doesn't rub us out at times. Okay? Because of the way we live. I mean, haven't you ever, listen, how many of you ever thought to yourself, boy, was I, if I was God, that guy probably wouldn't be around? Huh? You never thought that way? Huh? I didn't, but Ron Moreland told me he thought that before. And so I went on. The Lord's mercy is everlasting, never runs out. His mercy endureth forever. And then see, now the, the third reason of his gratefulness is the Lord's truth endures forever. Aren't you glad God gave us His truth? And it endures forever. It's, it's, it, it doesn't change. It's always the same because God's always the same. If God doesn't change, His work doesn't change. How grateful I am that we don't have a changing God with a changing word. I'm thankful that I can still believe 33 years after I entered the ministry, I can still believe the same thing I believed 33 years ago. I don't have to change it because the book didn't change. God didn't change. And so I'm glad His truth endures forever. In Romans 11 and verse number 36, Paul's giving thanks and praise to God. And he says this, For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Of Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. If I'd ask, what is God to you? What is Christ to you in your life? You know, some people, if you picture your life, and we talked about this in teachers meeting tonight, you know, if you picture your life as a, as a pie chart, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not pumpkin pie. Don't, don't get the wrong idea. All right? it's, you know, and, you know, people think, what's God? And you say, well, you know, this, this part of the pie is my work, and this part of my pie is my family, and this part of my pie is my recreation, this part of my pie is, and, and this little part right here, that's, that's God. Can I tell you? God isn't supposed to be a part of the pie. Christ is to be the pie. Not just for the preacher, not just for the missionary, not just for the evangelist, but for the believer. When Christ, who is our life, he's our life. And so 
of him and to him and through him are all things. That's why it's so, it's so foreign to Bible Christianity when they will ask a presidential candidate who is a believer to say, now you're not going to carry those beliefs in your day-to-day decisions into the White House. What are you talking about? In other words, hey, you be a Christian if you want, but leave those beliefs on Sunday in the church house when you're there, and when you go out, don't let that affect how you live. My friend, that's not Bible Christianity. That's not what the Bible teaches. This is, this is a Christian life. When Paul was persecuting those Christians, they said he would try to find any of this way. They were known as people of the way. What? This way of life. It's the way they lived. This is just something we do, and we, we, we wow, i got to have something to do on the weekends. I guess I'll go to church. No, no, no. This is, this is a life. This is a life 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, all the time. This is how we live. And so, of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. So, all of our praise, all of our thanksgiving is to be directed to God, being thankful for what he has done. Now, when you read Psalm 100, it doesn't take long, five verses, okay? Just think about how many times God is mentioned or referred to in just those five verses. Now, I counted at least 15 times just in five verses, making sure that it's God who gets the praise. It's God who gets the glory. It's God who deserves our thanks. Get so frustrated when people talk about being thankful and being, you know, having gratitude, and they go all around the bush trying to make sure they won't mention God. Well, who else has blessed you? It's got to be God. So this Thanksgiving, amid the preparations and amidst the events and the excitement, I pray that you'll make sure you thank God. That you give, that you take the time to thank Him with joy, with gladness, with thankfulness, with gratitude, and with a heart that is dependent upon Him. Make sure that it's a thanksgiving. Five ingredients. What are they? Number one, joy. Number two, gladness. Number three, dependence. Number four, thankfulness. Number five, gratitude. Father, bless the message to our hearts tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this psalm. Thank you, Lord, for these five ingredients. And I pray, Lord, that we'll remember them, not just for Thanksgiving Day, but every day of our lives. For certainly, we ought to be living a life of thanksgiving to you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for being our God, for being so good and so gracious so kind and so loving to us, your children. Now, Father, I thank you for the many workers that you've blessed us with here at Bible Baptist Church. And Lord, we we realize tonight, as we just try to give a small token of appreciation to those who labor and serve here, that we are simply trying to give honor to whom honor is due. We're trying to acknowledge the folks who are faithfully and serving you. But Lord, we also realize that we don't serve for earthly reward. We're serving for the well done, thou good and faithful servant. And Lord, if we hear those words when we see you, that's all we really want. That's all we need is that you would be pleased with the service that we render to you while we're here. Bless our time together tonight as we honor those who faithfully serve you here at Bible Baptist Church. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. 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 Brother Bob, why don't you come? We're going to sing a song together. Um, I think it's Great is Thy Faithfulness, isn't it? It's 177 in your hymn book, if you grab that. 177. Go ahead and stand as you get ready to sing that song. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. 177. Go ahead and stand. Brother Bob will lead us.
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's sing that chorus one more time. I like to sing that without the instruments. But it'd be really nice if you were in your seats when we did so. Let's sing that last uh, chorus one more time without the instruments. All right, all together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Our ushers will come and they'll get our. It's there, but it's not. You got all the juice in it you can't. We're just trying to thank God's blessing on our offering to Him. All right, I'll just sing this. Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that's ours to give. And Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. And I pray you'll bless our giving tonight as we give back a portion of what you've given to us in full. And Lord, may we give out of a cheerful heart and out of a heart of love for you and for your work. May you use the giving of your people to take care of the needs of your work in this place. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Well, as you see in your bulletin, we did a little different format for this year, and uh, because what we have for you this evening, uh, workers, we didn't go with a different, usually in the past we've gone a different candy for each ministry, uh, you know, the, uh, what the nursery get, Baby Ruth and choir got symphony bars and, you know, things like that, we try to make it the ministry, and uh, this year we're giving you a cup full of candy, okay? All sorts of, there's a Snickers bar in there or two, there's Hershey's, there's Kit Kat, there's M&M's, there's Hershey Kisses, all sorts of wonderful stuff to get you started on your Thanksgiving diet, all right? And uh, so that's what you have, and you get a nice uh, Bible Baptist Church cup that it goes in. That would be worth an ooh or an ah. Oh. Th thank you, all right, good, that's better, all right? Okay, so we'll, and so to do that, rather than have you come up, you know, and get it, and then you come up other times, you won't get anything, we're going to recognize you by families. Uh, it does two things. We'll get to, you, we'll tell you what, we'll tell by what different ministries you're involved in as your family, and then you'll get your um, cup, and you'll get a family picture uh, while you're here, and uh, then we'll re recognize you that way, okay? We're going to do two families at a time, and you'll be on each side here, Okay. And uh, that would be great. And we'll start with the Abrams. Abrams and Stacy Anderson. So why don't you come on up, Abrams, Pete and Emma. Is Pete here? Yeah. 
There's Dave. Here comes Pete. All right. Get his. Now, Pete and Emma take turn cleaning the church, and that means they take a Saturday in a rotation and they clean the auditorium. The uh, Pete and Emma both sing in the choir. He's an usher. She teaches Sunday school. Pete takes care of our lawn uh, and takes care of that during the mowing season. Emma helps in nursery, and she also does an RU nursery on Friday nights. Okay, Stacy, where'd you go? What are you doing? I'm, whoa, 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 whoa! You stay up here till we're done. All right. Got your candy and leave. I tell you, you must be a Baptist. All right. Here's Stacy, and uh, Stacy sings in the choir and uh, is a Sunday school teacher and uh, helps in the nursery, and uh, these are. These are serving folks, and uh, we appreciate them. Give them a hand, all right? Thank you. Amen. All right. Now let's have the Dave Anderson family and the Barham family, okay? Andersons, you come right on this side, and Barham's right over here, okay? Now the Andersons also take, take turns cleaning the church on a Saturday, okay? And um, Dave is an usher, works with the... Um, sound room and he also works with uh, computers and such in the finance office and he delivers to Kroger and by the way there is an abundance of hot dog buns over there I, well over 100 packages uh, that came from Kroger all right so uh, if if you ever thought about having turkey sandwiches on a hot dog bun just uh, <laughs> pick some up tonight will you uh, that would be a great help, okay? There's just a lot over there, and we sure would like to clear them out so don't get thrown away, okay? So Dave brings that in. Jeanette is in the choir, and Jeanette gets supplies for us from Sam's Club, makes that run. Hannah sings in the choir, helps in nursery, and helps in junior church, and Zach helps in junior church as well, all right? That's the Andersons. And then over here on the Barham side, uh, Jason helps to usher occasionally. He's a children's church preacher. Uh, Heather is helps in Sunday school at times in the nursery. Uh, she's also in children's church, of course, with uh, her husband. Helps work in the nursery, and she also does an RU nursery on Friday nights for us, for the RU program. Sierra helps in junior church as well as Abigail does, and they both take care of the water up here on the platform. There, that is important, I'm telling you. So we sat there, and uh, the, the, they, get, they get bigger cups because they're kids. All right? All right, give these folks a hand, will you? Thank you, Andersons and Barhams. God bless you. Nancy Beach and Dean Blake. There they are. Nancy, of course, sings in the choir. She's instrumentalist, both organ and piano, and she's active in the nursing home ministry as well. And uh, also now going to be available for the nursery. Isn't that great? So you got to... And then Brother Dean... Uh, has done tremendous things in the sound room. Uh, what a what a blessing! Just has uh, done so many things around here that you don't know about, but we know about. Uh, Fellowship Hall and getting the uh, live stream set up there, getting um, internet over there, and just just takes care of so many things. And computer guru, and uh, helps with so much, and uh, just a. Just a great addition to our church. We appreciate it, Brother Dean. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brother, the Coltmans, John and Carol. I don't think Courtney's here. Is Courtney Green here? Is Heather Eaton here? No. Carol Hoskins. Stand back. There you are. Come on up here, Carol. Don't, don't look like you didn't see your name in the program, all right? <laughs> You're there, all right? Appreciate John and Carol. They take, the, they take a Saturday and clean the auditorium and uh, do a great job with that. And, of course, uh, John ushers, and they both kind of pass out my Sunday school lessons during the Sunday school class. And uh, Carol sings in the choir and helps in the nursery. Uh, Coleman's are a real blessing to us. And then over here is Carol. Carol, how long have you been a member at Bible Baptist Church? 36 years. How about that? And uh, she comes every Monday 
and uh, her and Miss Talladay take care of the fellowship hall and uh, get it cleaned up, straightened up, and does a great job with that. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. And then we have the Lindermans and the Linkies. Chuck and Cynthia and Brett and Lisa and Joshua and Samuel. Here they come. All right. Brett and Lisa have the bus ministry. And uh, also they do a junior church on Sunday. And then Brett is, sings in the choir and is an usher. And Lisa, of course, uh, instrumentalist in choir and nursery worker. And uh, very involved in the ministry here. We appreciate them. And, of course, the Lindermans, brand new members, been uh, officially anyway, but uh, they, Chuck is, is he, he is going to be an usher. He didn't know that yet, probably, but yeah, now you do. And uh, <laughs> Cynthia, even before she was a member, we put her work at nursery a few times, and uh, she'll be helping out in there. And uh, these folks have been a real blessing. A faithful soul winner, and um, just a delight to have them in our church. And uh, these, these folks, thank you for your service. We appreciate you. God bless you. All right, Brenda Mann and McKeon family. Brenda Mann and McKeon family. Now, somebody's going to take pictures since Lindy's up here with the camera. You take Brenda's, and then who can handle a camera? There we go. Here she comes. And then you get a picture of the McKeons, all right? Brenda is uh, helping out on Friday nights with the RU Kids program, especially in the area of food. Uh, Brenda loves to cook, and uh, I'll testify. She does a great job and uh, has made us several things. It's really good. And I appreciate Brenda and what she does. And now uh, with the McKeons, uh, Bill Ushers, don't go anywhere. You're not done yet. Stay up here. Ushers, Bill is, uh, we have maintenance, which means when something breaks, we call him. Right. Okay, our you kids on Friday night, as well as uh, Lindy working with our you kids. And uh, they also, Bill's also involved with our you inside, which is the are you in the prison. And then also he drives the bus on Sunday. And uh, does a great job with that. Lindy, of course, sings in the choir, helps in the church office. She does nursery, does Are You Kids, and she's also the photographer for the church. Uh, Desiree, who's not here tonight, she, she's working. She sings in the choir and does nursery. And David helps with the Are You Kids on Friday night as well. And uh, appreciate these folks and their service for the Lord. Give them a hand, will you? Amen. I don't think the Messers are here, are they? Okay. I think the Morelands are here. Well, the Morelands come. Is the Normans here? Are the Normans here? None of them? Not even, not even Emma? Okay. Uh, Perricks are here, though. Xavier and Felicia. Ron, of course, helps usher when, he, when, when they're here. And uh, he's also, of course, uh, has his 1040 International Ministry uh, heading uh, into re some restricted countries with the gospel. And uh, Anne, of course, plays the flute when she's here on Wednesday evenings and uh, helps in the nursery often. And also, of course, in addition to being called to be a missionary. And uh, we appreciate the Mormons so much and what they do whenever they're in town. And uh, today we had some other people doing some things and... Ron asked what he could do. Don't go anywhere. And uh, act like you don't like the spotlight or anything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and I told Ron, I said, well, I guess you could, I guess we need to vacuum the auditorium for tonight. And so he got the sweeper out and he vacuumed the auditorium. And uh, that's, that's the kind of servant missionary uh, that he is. And uh, he's a real servant of the Lord. Appreciate that. And his wife just found out he can run a vacuum, so he's in trouble, you know. All right. He did what? Yeah, I know. And then Xavier and Felicia here, and uh, they're both involved in the bus ministry now and, on, and ride the bus, and Xavier's singing in the choir. Uh, Felicia works in the nursery. She works on, with the Wednesday night children's program and uh, also uh, did a lot with helping with our missions conference this year and getting it ready. And these folks have been a real blessing to us, so they've only been here... How long have you been here? June. Well, you're on June, okay, about half the year. 
and uh, just jumped right in and uh, busy serving the Lord. We appreciate you folks very much. God bless you. That's great. All right. Are the parishes here? Did they make it? I don't see them. Oh, okay. Then we have the poll labels and Jan Proke. Is Jan here? There's Jan. Let the poll labels out there. John and Cheryl. And they go back. I think they were saved 1976 in Bible Baptist Church. And uh, hey, that's 40 years. Wow. Must have got saved when you were 12. Amen. Yeah. And John ushers, of course, and uh, Cheryl helps out in the nursery. And then Jan here uh, sings in the choir and is active in the nursing home ministry and uh, helping out in the nursery as well. And uh, we sure appreciate the service you folks give. For years, uh, until his body couldn't take it anymore, John was on the bus every week and uh, still has a great heart for the bus ministry and, and for the children that come on the bus and uh, just appreciate his love for the Lord and his love for children. And uh, we appreciate you folks very much. God bless you. Amen. Is Mary Lou here tonight? Mary Lou make it? No? All right. We have the Reed family and Leanne Schnapp. Reeds and Leanne. All right. Of course, most of you know Bob is, he leads the choir and He's also a fix-it man, and he runs the RU program on Friday night. He also uh, really kind of is in charge of the RU inside at the prison. He teaches the Home Builders Sunday School class. Uh, he's our music director at the church. He's associate pastor, and he does just about anything that I ask him to do. And uh, just a tremendous, tremendous help in the ministry here. Tanya uh, sings in the choir. She also is a leader at, our, at Reformers Unanimous on Friday nights here at church. Helps in the nursery, uh, also helps in the Sunday school there in the home builders class, and she runs the Pee Wee kids on Wednesday night, uh, the ones who aren't of school age yet. And so uh, she does that every Wednesday evening, and we appreciate so much, Bob and Tanya and your family. God bless you. And then Leanne is involved in the nursing home ministry. She's involved with cleaning. She cleans the restrooms every week. Uh, you know what? Somebody's got to do it. And you'd, you'd know it if they aren't done. And so she takes care of that and does it, does it joyfully and happily and uh, does a great job. And she also helps with the RU Kids on Friday night uh, program with the children of those who are attending RU. And then she also helps in our nursery and uh, appreciate the service that Leanne gives to the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, okay. Let's see. I've... Shirky, Amanda's working. Gage is going to represent over here. All right, Gage, you come on up. I don't think, is Shannon here? Shannon's not here, is she? And Mike isn't here, so it would be Slayball, Andrew, and Nicole. Come on up. Just bring the family. It's all right. Bring them on up. Drew and Alana. There they go. Get a family picture. How about that? All right. Now, Amanda's working tonight, but she sings in the choir and helps in the office, and is, uh, she drives the white bus, the little shuttle bus, and works in the nursery and helps in Sunday school. Gage is working in junior church and also the bus ministry, and he's involved with that, and uh, God bless you, Gage. That's great. Thank you for being here. All right, over here, Nick and Andy clean the church. They take a Saturday, and they clean. And he sings in the choir, and he helps usher. He, these two edit words to encourage, and uh, they, they, they make it all fit in the time. I, I don't always get to hear the broadcast. I do the broadcast. I always get to hear it after they edit it. And uh, they do such a good job. Uh, th there's people come up to me and say, you mean you don't do that every day live? They, they, they think it's coming out every day that way, and it don't. I, I give it to them. We're, we're done right now all the way through next Tuesday's broadcast. is already into the radio station. And um, they do all that and get it ready and send it to them. And uh, they do a great job with that ministry. And then Andy works in the finance office, and uh, he's uh, 
teen Sunday school teacher. Uh, he takes a turn junior church, teaching junior church, and he's also involved with the RU inside uh, at the prison out at London. And then Nicole sings in the choir and does specials, and she does the words to encourage editing. She works in nursery. She's involved with the teen Sunday school and the teen ministry. Uh, she also helps in the children's church when he does their children's church turn, and she also has helped in the Wednesday night kids program. And so I uh, appreciate your service. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. Sorry? No. Stiltner. Let's see. How about Kathy, you come up. Mrs. Slaybaugh, okay. And Diane Stiltner. Diane sings in the choir. Diane is our fill-in bus driver. When we need somebody to drive, we call her and she steps in. For years, she was over-the-road trucker. And uh, she still loves to drive and does a great job with that. And she even works in the nursery. And she serves the Lord with gladness. All right? And um, or maybe it is madness. I'm not sure. But that's, uh, and, and Mrs. Slayball sings in the choir and works in the nursery. And she has Sunday school with the little ones. And she does the Wednesday night kids program, and she works in the nursery and, <laughs> and does, runs the ladies' meetings, ladies' ministry, and uh, she takes care of the preacher, takes care of the pastor, and does a great job at that. And so we appreciate that very much. God bless you. Thank you. I'm sorry? Okay. If you would like to make dressing from the hot dog buns, you see Diane. <laughs> She'll fill you in on how that happens, okay? There's your little, I feel like that's a commercial in the middle of it. There you go, all right? There you go. Talladays and Taylors. Talladays and Taylors. Jim and Margaret? Are you by yourself? Oh, Margaret, all right? Just not feeling well? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, Jim sings in the choir, and Jim is one of our ushers. Margaret sings in the choir. Margaret, as I said earlier, comes in on Mondays and cleans the fellowship hall uh, with Carol. And then the Taylors, together, they do the church sign out front. Uh, all those witty messages you read out there, that's from them. And uh, they, they put those up each week, and then... Don sings in the choir. Don helps usher. Don is also a driver uh, on the bus when we need him. And uh, he's also one of those maintenance guys that we go to when we need something fixed. And he's involved with the RU ministry, both here on Friday night and also down at the CRC on Thursday nights. And Cindy, of course, sings in the choir and does specials. And uh, she also is involved with the RU inside ministry, the slips the men fill out on Thursday nights and Saturdays. I think they all go to her, and she takes care of those and processes those, and then we uh, go from there. So uh, we appreciate so much the tailors and your service for the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. All right, Villa Toro and Wallace. Villa Toro and Wallace. Bob and Kay Wallace, how many years at Bible Baptist Church? 85, okay. 31 years. And uh, Bob sings in the choir. He ushers. He's also one of our maintenance guys who helps fix things around here. He's involved with RU on Friday night. He's also involved with the RU inside down at CRC on Thursday nights. Uh, he teaches Sunday school. And he all, they also both work on when we have baptisms and getting folks ready for the baptismal. And then Kay is uh, singing in the choir. Uh, she's a secretary in the church office. Uh, she also takes care of the RU uh, on Friday nights and all the records that go along with that. Uh, she helps in the nursery. She teaches Sunday school, and she helps in the bapt baptistry as well, getting them ready. And we sure appreciate folks who faithfully serve like the Wallaces have served through the years. Then we have the new family here, the Villatoros. They uh, have 
jumped on the schedule to clean the church, and uh, they'll take a turn on Saturdays to clean the church. They um, also are taking a turn teaching the junior church, and they're going to be in there this Sunday. And uh, then Rachel has helped in the nursery, and uh, also the bus ministry and the visitation side of it. Charles is uh, helping in the children's church and also the bus ministry. And Kaylee's also helping in junior church and uh, serving in that way. And we appreciate these folks joining in and uh, just jumping right in and wanting to serve the Lord. And uh, it's great to have folks come and, and not interested in what, what the church is going to do for them, but how they can serve God in the local church. And that's a blessing. And uh, we appreciate you folks so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. I don't think the Wrights are here, are they? But the Yoders are here. Dave and Terry Yoder, come on up. Dave has helped us usher, and he's another one of the maintenance guys, and, uh, and he helped Brother Pete with the yard and uh, getting it cared for. And, of course, he's the, uh, with 1040 International as well, uh, the, national, the international director as far as the pastor training and national training uh, that goes on with that. And, of course, Terry did a great job with the missions conference this year and getting stuff ready and decorated for that. And we appreciate her servant's heart and being willing to help anywhere that she can and uh, while uh, learning all about being a missionary and uh, supporting her husband in that endeavor. And we, we appreciate the Yoders so much. They've, they were here years ago and then were gone for about 20 years and now they're back and it's exciting to see what God's doing uh, and what he's going to do in your life. God bless you both. Thank you. All right, now, there's one more thing I want to do. It's, uh, we, have, we have four missionaries, four missionary families with us uh, that are they're really from our church. Isn't that a great thing? Uh, you know, the greatness of a church is not in the number that it seats, but the number that it sends. And God's doing some great things here and allowing us to be able to send out missionaries. And we're excited about that, all right? And uh, we just wanted to give them something this evening. Jack and Sherry Jarvis and uh, Ron and Ann Moreland, Dave and Terry Yoder, and John and Emily Combest, okay? Not for you, John, but we like Emily. Okay, and, uh, <laughs> no, I, seriously, I, I appreciate these folks too. They help get these gifts ready uh, for you folks. Uh, they came down today and helped do some wrapping and filling cups and things like that. And again, just appreciate folks willing to help, willing to do whatever they can. I want you four missionaries families to come up. We have something we'd like to give to you. I'll, uh, by the way, you get, you get this, and I'll show you what this is, but I figure M, when I thought of missionaries, I thought of M and M's for missionaries, so <laughs> we're going to give you some M and M's to munch on too, all right? Yeah, I'll show you. I got, who's do I have? Jack and Cherries. I'll take this out. I'll probably never get it back in, but. Bob Wallace knows how to do it. This is a, uh, a nice, there's a little, in the, in the top thing there, you'll see a little screw that'll go in the back of this, and so it'll stand up. And it's a plaque that, it just has the Bible and the cross on it, it's praying hands, and it says, thank you for being our missionary, Bible Baptist Church, Grove City, Ohio, November 2015. And I just want you to set that somewhere, and when you see it, Pray for us and know that we'll be praying for you. And uh, we appreciate you so much. All right? God bless you. We'll give this to you. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Brother Yoder, here you go, buddy. <laughs> You're the maintenance guy. Put that together, all right? <laughs> 
Amen. Oh, that's great, isn't it? It's always easier to take stuff apart than it is to put it back together. There's a sermon in there somewhere, isn't there? Amen. Well, it's been our tradition now for the last, I don't know how many years, to have Don and Cindy Taylor sing, I want to... I just want to thank you, Lord. It's on the back of your bulletin. And uh, I want them to come. Yeah, you come on. And that's how we close out the service. So uh, let's just have them come, and they're going to sing this song for us tonight, okay? Are you going to use this one? Uh, Are they going to be able to use this? There's not much happening. Can you use a handheld one? don't have much choice unless you want me to put this one on you, Don. Yeah. Want me to put this one on you? Uh, no, I can't help. You'll be thankful. For making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, flowers that bloom, ocean so blue, thank you, Lord. Oh, the sparrows that sing, oh, they make sweet melody, for rivers that flow. Rain in the snow, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Saving my soul, thank you, Lord. For my home and family, for all life joys you've given me. Shoes on my feet, plenty to eat, thank you, Lord. For the church to worship and pray. For all the freedoms I have today, sweet spirit, I feel your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. For being a friend so dear, for giving my sad heart cheer, holding my hand when I could not stand. Thank you, Mercy and grace, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for blessing our church this year, saving souls both far and near, for people to love, sent from above, thank you, Lord, for every family so dear, serving you. Everything you've done for making us one. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank.
your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done on our behalf. Lord, we, we just lift our hearts in thanks and gratitude to you. Thank you for our church. Thank you, Lord, for people who love you. Thank you for the privilege to serve amongst such humble servants of God. Pray your blessing upon each family, each individual as we leave this place tonight. And those who will be traveling, Lord, please watch over them. Get them safely to their destination. Bless our time with friends and family over the next several days. Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds will stay fixed on you and your mercy and your grace and your goodness to us. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for what you do in our lives and through our lives. Dismiss us now with your care, please. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.